Okay, thanks for joining me on this dissection and performance and tutorial for the Baba O'Reilly song. The first thing you want to do is you want to tune your Nord Stage 3 to a little higher than what you would think it is. It's actually um, 440 standard tuning. This has got to be somewhere around 449 or plus 35 on this. So um, let me just put it down to 440 and you'll see what I mean. There's a huge difference here. The song is actually really sharp. So if I play the piano, I've got a piano here. Let me go ahead and play this. Wow, is that out of tune, right? So let's go to plus 35. We should be a lot better. Okay, that's part one. Now, the arpeggiator part is an interesting thing. My first introduction to the synthesizer was through Pete Townsend when he asked me to do Who's Next. And he sent me the demos that he'd made in his own studio. He's an extremely accomplished engineer. I couldn't believe the sounds that were coming out of these demos because of the synthesizer he'd used. Back in those days, they were really complicated. It looked a bit like the old-fashioned telephone exchange with calls going everywhere. There are oscillators which produce the sound, filters, amplifiers, and envelope generators which shape it. First of all, he figured out how to work it, but he then took it and, and used it for the first time, in my experience anyway, in the most extraordinary way, Barbara O'Reilly being a classic example. He created a rhythm pattern that was not only a very strange sound, but the actual rhythm itself was rather odd, and then wrote a song around it. And juxtaposed it against the power of Keith Moon, John Entwistle, and himself playing guitar, bass, and drums, and then the extraordinary explosive vocal that Roger Daltrey gives us. I'm here in the fields One of my major problems was to compete with Pete's demos, which were invariably amazing, and very often I'd steal elements from the demo, the synthesizer track, and then would play that in to the band. And they would, they actually recorded to a playback of Pete's synthesizer because the synthesizer suggests the rhythm. Keith had terrible trouble with it. Keith used to have to play to a click track and he used to tape the, the earphones to his head because he was such an animated drummer. You know, when we used to do Barbara O'Reilly and, and Won't Get Fooled Again to a backing track of, of that sound, it's a fifth member of the band. I've set my keyboard here to split. So I've got an arpeggiator in the left hand, piano on the right. And I can break this down in another video because it, it's elaborate if you want to get the sound. I mean, it's not exact to what it was, but it's pretty darn close. Um, but that would be a very long video to include how do I create that sound along with the performance. So let me just tell you that the Arpeggiator is to 116, which means 16 notes per beat, okay? And the tempo that I've set, and again, the loop station is driving the Nord as far as the sequencer of the... The arpeggiator is a slave to the boss, okay? So the boss has got 118.6. Now that is, in my opinion, the exact tempo that Baba O'Reilly is in, at least the first minute, because what you'll find out is when the drums kick in, the who actually slows down and it's no longer 116, it's something else. So I'm just going to play the first minute of this. Um, so here's how it breaks down. The way this arpeggiator part works, and I, I know a lot of people on YouTube have tried to figure that out, and a lot of them have, and transposed it note for note, and some play it live and on a piano, and there's other YouTubers that have transcribed it to, to actual notation, and they've practiced it and all this stuff. And I think that the way the who did it, it was actually a lot easier than, than what we think. 
Um, let me explain. There's a 16th note part, and that is recorded on one track, and then there's a 32nd note part added to that. So let's record the first 16th note part, and you'll see what I mean. So I'm gonna set my keyboard up with a KB hold. Now I've got that ready to go. I'm gonna take the mic out here for a second and record on track one real quick. Stand by. Okay, let's make sure we've got a clean recording. Track one. Take out the metronome. Yep, it's a clean recording. Okay, that sounds great. Now, I'm gonna set my arpeggiator to 30 second notes, and that's gonna layer right on top of it. Just like that. It's that simple. All right, and to prove that we've got the tempo right and that um, the notes and things are working the way they're supposed to, I'm gonna have the actual song playing quietly in the background. The dominant sound will be the keyboard, but it kind of makes it so that this all comes together. All right, let's see if we can do this. And so I'm gonna hit play on this, then I've got to use my hand to sync it up as best po as best as possible on the start of this. But once it gets started, and I start if I assuming I start it correctly, these things will stay in sync for a whole minute. So until the drums kick in, when the who actually slows down, there's nothing I can do about that. Let's see if I can play this um, uh, without a mistake. But I'm not making any guarantees. Let's give it a try anyway. Okay. All right, there it is. I, I managed to get through that pretty good. Now you can hear as the drums kicked in, the sync is totally off whack. So listen closely to about a minute into the song, wait for those drums to kick in, and you'll hear for yourself the who slow down. All right, that's it for this lesson. I uh, hope you learned some things. Uh, for those of you interested in finding out this sound, I can provide that in another video if you're interested. I can also make the sound downloadable so that you can import it directly in and you'll have this whole mapping for the song if you want to do the same thing. Okay, thanks.